Okay, we are back. Loving the skin I'm in, Donovan Sadiq, and my partner in crime, DK, who you can hear on Sundays at 3 p.m. Also, a new show that we started is called Daryl Terrell's Two Cents. That's Mr. Merrill Valley, Daryl Terrell. He talks about hope, inspiration, and things that keep you going as you live inside this matrix. Also, uh, Pastor Don has his show. Great show. A lot of stuff that's going on in the uh, local news here in Merrill Valley, California. However... This segment we have called Kanika Jenkins, or is it Kanika Martin? Oh my goodness. So, uh, Dee, please uh, let me know, how do you know this case? What Do you know that's uh, Jenkins I, 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 I heard it's Kanika Jenkins. Kanika okay. Martin is new to me, but I know her mother's name is Martin. Right. Now, um, <laughs> how many Facebook aliases do you have? One. Because according to the Facebook bylaws, you're supposed to have one profile with your real name and, you know, whatever. Unless, it's, unless you're doing a political organization. I got one. Right, you got one. Now, uh, let me give this disclaimer for those that might be listening or watching me on video. Uh, we're trying to have a discussion, and this is an opinion show. Dee gives her opinion. I give my opinion. And in the comments, you can give your opinion. If you start talking crazy, I'm going to block you. Because we don't need that. We're trying. We're all trying to solve this. We're all trying to keep this young lady's uh, name in front of the press, possibly to get the FBI to get involved because mm -hmm. the case has been closed for two weeks. Which now. is amazing that it has been closed. I, I, I don't know how you can close the case when the tapes have obviously been edited. I mean, all these things that just keep coming up. And it wasn't for people like you guys that are watching this show and other shows. Uh, this would be just another a black girl dead. Right. In my opinion, that's the way it would go. It'd be like, oh, another nigga dead. There it mm -hmm. is. So uh, please, uh, like I said, I, I'm not above being you know commented on. People call me all kinds of stuff. They mostly call me Denzel, but that's okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, why are you laughing? <laughs> so, I didn't know that. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, please, please. So, you know, please let, uh, let's be adults. Let's comment. Because this is a serious thing. A young girl lost her life. Mm -hmm. Now, Critically thinking, my opinion is this, and I told you this very much, Dee, that this girl lived in a gang-infested lifestyle. She also was raised in a gang. You know, you are a product of your environment. There's a lot of people that make comments that say, that don't mean she can't make it. Nobody said that. Nobody said that. That's how they say it. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, you know, you, you know, these black women, when they come at you for, you know, just, you know, there's no reason to talk like that. Just, hey, search your opinion, whatever it is. Nobody said you can't make it. I'm an example of coming from nothing to where I'm at. Balling. Well, I'm not balling, but I'm getting there. Uh, after my court case Monday, oh, I was balling. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, but but uh, oh, D. Don't run your ass over no. in the parking lot. Yeah, but D is an uh, example of how you could have it all and lose it. Yeah, the opposite of <laughs> yeah. rags, which is the rags. Which is the rags. So uh, you are a product of your environment. It, I mean, there's all kinds of stories of athletes, these people that come from nothing. And they make it in the NBA, the WNBA, whatever. That uh, dropping mixtapes. You see people out there selling their mixtapes and their. What CDs. you know about some mixtapes? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was one of Easy E's first okay. customers when he was selling it, it, it at the Compton Swap Meet out of his uh, trunk of his car. Yeah, you probably still have it too. I huh? still do. I still do. <laughs> I still do. Anyway, and that's when Ruthless Record was on Malico Records. Oh. Okay, watch out now with your old ass. Yeah, so a lot of us don't know what Malico <laughs> Records is about. Uh, that had Johnny Taylor and all them, the old school boys on oh, it. So that, so that goes way back. So uh, so they, they weren't on priority yet. So the priority roof was priority. Anyway. So anyway, uh, with this story with Kanika Jenkins, this girl has, and this is why, why I say there's a lot of uh, inconsistencies. Somebody came up to me, B, and they had said, oh, she is now an angel up in heaven. With everybody else. That's how they said it? Well, no, they said like that. <laughs> oh, my God. But that's the way it felt. You know, they made it seem like this girl was this innocent person. And I'm not I'm not here to bash her. What I'm saying is, I, I responded to the lady and I said, she's innocent based on what? You, in concept? Well, maybe she meant she's innocent and in that she didn't deserve to right. die. Right. No, I agree with that. Nobody deserves I don't care how evil you are. You don't deserve to yeah. die like that. But, um... You know, there's constant videos of her flipping people off and, you know, doing certain things. And blah, blah, blah. I mean, she was a bad seed, probably a nuisance. But, I mean, in the larger scheme of things, I don't think she deserved to be in no. the freezer. No, so. yeah. Nobody deserved to be in the freezer. But I do get where you're going. You know, yes. oftentimes people will paint 
um, people who maybe weren't so good while they were alive as all now these deities. Right. Oh, they're in heaven yeah. with the Lord. You're in heaven with Jesus. <laughs> you know, so, um, <laughs> so, you know, yesterday was uh, Halloween. Mm -hmm. Is it kind of ironic that Dr. Oz had Kanika's mom and her sister on the show? Well, I don't have TV, but when you told me about it, I thought, what, Dr. Mm -hmm. Oz? I mean, because mm -hmm. when I think of Dr. Oz, I think about him telling you about herbs and all these other things that help you, you know, to be healthy and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. But to hear it, so why, why were they on Dr. Oz? Well, basically, it, to me, this is my opinion, was, you know, to keep awareness of uh, Kanika's uh, thing. And Dr. Oz being a doctor, no matter where this lady goes, they keep giving her the same narrative. Like, well, it was an accident medically, and you know, she died of hypothermia. That's what Dr. Oz was saying? Yeah, he was, uh -huh. you know, he was doing the doctor thing, saying, yeah. well, she had this in her system, she had that in her system. He's all attributed to her death. It was a un bad accident. But guess who else was on the show? Who? Nancy Grace. Oh, Nancy, Nancy Grace. Grace Nancy Grace says there's something more going on to this. Yeah, thing. you know Nancy Grace is gonna bring out the yeah. conspiracy. Yeah, the conspiracy thing too. She doesn't have a show anymore, huh? No, no, she's that. You know, they, they retooled. And yeah. You, and you know how the Republicans go on the the Democratic show and the Democrats go on the Republican mm -hmm. show. It's all Operation Mockingbird. I used to like Nancy Grace. Um, I, to me though, when she was going hard against Michael Jackson, talking about he's yeah. guilty, he's guilty, and when he got found not guilty, the look on her face was like, how? Wow, that man yeah. escaped. But um, uh, logically thinking, if really thinking, um, I firmly believe she was a member of a gang, if not by association. Mm -hmm. Her father, she was a gang princess, or however you want to call it. Uh, the guerrilla mafia, all these things that are going on. She was associated with gang because if you see in, in pictures, she's flashing up signs. She goes by Kanika Jenkins. She goes by Kanika Martin. Why the aliases? Maybe your daddy was a genius and her mom was a Martin. Right, but why have two? Why can't you just hyphenate your name or whatever you're going to do? Why have two different I, things I, that have two different? Well, I, I, just to kind of play devil's advocate, which here, you always do. I don't know if she was using that as an alias because I've never even heard of the name Kanika before. Mm -hmm. So it's not like Kanika is a very um, uh, used name. I've never right. Heard no, I understand that. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, in the other page that she uses mm -hmm. Martin. All the people that are that were at that party, there's like a 360 around Kanika. These people are all linked to it. And in the Kanika Martin page, you see her at a younger age, you know, maybe three or four years ago. She's flashing all these new bills of money and stuff like that. Now you're from the south side of Chicago, and you're selling drugs. Okay, you're not gonna make that kind of money. And not only was she doing it, Monifa was doing it. The other girl. So where do you think it. this money is coming from? I think, like I said, this is a cartel of uh, people. Uh, the man, I was watching a lot of Pam Grimm movies. The man, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's not it, it's not beyond imagination that if I was the man, I'm going to use these lower level people to do my dirt work and, you know, sell drugs and, you know, mess up the community and pay them to do certain things. Uh Organ harvesting. I think that's a very real thing that is going on up there. So you think maybe they were involved in organ harvesting? Well, why not? Because if I was the man and I see these Negroes out here killing each other, okay, we just, you know, this person's dead over here. Let's go get this body. Let's go harvest this. Or if we can so bring these Kanika people to... So what has got to do with that? They're at the lower level where they could uh, bring people in to be mm. set up. You know what I mean? They're, they're young okay. girls coming into their thing. I mean, mm. I'm an old guy traveling. I disappear. It's happening all the time. I mean, you give them to a central location mm -hmm. and, you know, certain stuff, you know, things happen. If you looked at the death photos, and we showed at the last show, notice that her teeth were cracked in something. And her lip was, you know, busted and stuff like that. How do you close a case? And regardless of if you agree with what I'm saying or if you don't agree with what I'm saying, one thing we do agree with is something happened to this girl. Yeah, I mean, even just the photos of her pants being unbuttoned and stuff. It's like, okay, that doesn't look like she just walked into a freezer and died. It looked mm -hmm. like something happened to her before that happened. Right, and Dr. Oz, once again, is on this show saying, well, you know, in hypothermia, your body heats up as it shuts down, and she took off her clothes. It's like, Okay, well, you're saying, it, you know, her clothes, she should have been naked. They should have took off her clothes. Her clothes weren't completely off of her. Yeah, like her pants were just down or right. open, yeah. And then there's a video where you see uh, Monifa and... What's her name? Mashaya or whatever her name, the other girl. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're carrying Kanika, 
like if you're this way and I'm this way, mm -hmm. so you're backwards to the camera and these people know more than what they think they know. Is her mother now conceding to the fact that maybe her friends did yes. have something to do yes. with her death? In, in the interview, on the radio interview, mm -hmm. as well as the doctor, uh, well, in the radio interview for sure, she said that um, everybody's a suspect. And she said that what her daughter's friends did was they, the trust, the loyalty was not there. They should have been more loyal to her daughter. Because you don't leave a person that's in a condition like that, you know, I mean, it, it, God forbid, it, it's like if, if you were inebriated, right, we're mm -hmm. at a party. Now, I know your man Al is in Houston because they said supposedly she was crying over her boyfriend being locked up. Uh -huh. Why are you dating these gangsters? I mean, that's a... Yeah. If I'm going to date a gangster as a woman, I should know this motherfucker's going to be locked up most of the time. This should be a short-term relationship right, right here. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and... Don't uh, put your feelings in it. Right. Uh, so... If you're, you know, I'm not going to leave you in a state where you can be taken advantage of. Because right. I know you're in a state that you can be taken advantage of. Right. So she was, basically the mother was saying that uh, the loyalty, everybody's still a suspect. Um, she has her faculties about her now a little bit more. Because mm -hmm. like I said, uh, Jebediah, the guy with the baseball hat that keeps. It, it, it's, it's, it's just a big mess. Everybody came in to make money. And, you know, now she wants to bring uh, things to it. But see, to me, by her acting the way she did earlier mm -hmm. in the case. She let them close this case when she could have been, you know, bringing in people and saying, I need help. And, you know, she's asking for help now. Yeah. But you know and I know once the man closes the case, they ain't going to go back into it for nothing. Yeah, it's probably pretty much a done deal, even though Ray Charles can see something happen to this yeah. child. Yeah. She didn't just walk into no freezer. Something happened to her before then. And, uh, you know, and it's unfortunate that uh, all these, like I said, I, I, I don't understand how any law enforcement agency... Even if the FBI is not requested, an FBI official that is looking at what is going on, the tapes are being edited, uh, there's something wrong with the way this body's positioned, there's something where you can step in without even just take over the case and right. give this woman justice, you know, and let this girl do her thing. But I do have a problem with people over here sitting at, you know, oh, she's this angel. That is not the case. I am in this basically for the simple fact that whatever happened to her was a crime and it needs to be solved. Right. Well, absolutely. Anytime somebody is murdered, yeah. it should be solved and not just saying, well, we think what had happened to her was. Mm -hmm. And that's the final official word when it's like, okay, right. you're saying she just froze to death. However, her teeth are chipped. Her pants or aren't buttoned. Down, right. She's missing some socks there's or something. Stuff, yeah. There's stuff in her system that shouldn't be in her system. Yeah, it's more than just, a, you know, some Videos accidents. are being edited. Yeah. Uh, people are disappearing. Right. So there's a little bit more to it. But remember when I said when this initially happened, remember I said, the mother isn't acting like a mother. You know, isn't acting. I'm not saying the grieving part, but I'm just saying these are certain things that you would be demanding. You would... You wouldn't be protesting the hotel. You would be protesting the police department. Well, I think, too, you know, again, none of us have had a child, neither one of us in here, have had a child who's been murdered or died. So it's kind of hard to say how the mom should react. However, I do agree with you in that she should have had people who are more conducive to her cause mm -hmm. on the team. Right. You know, like I said, she had this Jebediah dude and the other dude who... Uh, yeah, um, Jim Brown. <laughs> Damn, Jim Brown. <laughs> yeah. But she, those yeah. type of people who were obviously more interested in their All own financial gain, right? Yeah, instead of having somebody say, listen, Miss Jenkins or Miss uh, Martin, Martin, Ms. Martin. Is, you know, she's not able to speak however I'm going to speak for her. It is our, you know, goal to find out what happened to this child, blah, blah, blah. Instead of allowing her to go out there and just speak from happenstance, right? You know? Happenstance, and uh, you know, uh, you know, and stay focused on getting the answer. Remember, yeah. I, remember, I said that. Yeah, I said this woman should be focused on finding out the truth of what happened to her. And daughter. as always, you know, you got these ambulance chasers out mm -hmm. there, which is what those some of those activists were. They were mm -hmm. ambulance chasers, and that they wanted to get the fame and they wanted to mm -hmm. be there speaking for it in the beginning. You, I mean, you know more than I do, but it was all that confusion of who was speaking and yeah. who got the word and who talked yeah. to the hotel uh, and who recently, saw the body and all this other stuff. Uh, recently, Jebediah, who saw the, the uh, radio interview, mm -hmm. he put her on blast talking about she don't get no uh, grieving mother pass with me because she's talking about me. I mean, it's a big mess. I, I, you know what? For those of you guys who um, are not familiar with what I'm about to say, mm -hmm. that's some nigga shit. Nigga shit. That's you know, and it's, it's jealousy in that you know, well, 
now she's going on and getting this real yeah. national attention. Right. She's going on these radio shows. Right. She's going on Dr. Oz. Which is so, what she should have done in the very right. beginning. But so then you have these activists who are now feeling like, well, I was there with you in the beginning, so I should be getting some of this limelight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, you know, I honestly think that a lot of these activists did take advantage of her. Sure. Now, like I said, now that she's coming back into her yeah. right mind, She's able to speak to those things. And now they're like, oh, now she's throwing me under the bus. Now that bitch don't. I'm going to throw mm -hmm. her under the bus. Just shut up. It's not your child. Yeah. 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 And like I said, you know, uh, I give her all the uh, credit. Like I said, I wouldn't continue to be talking about this if I didn't really want this woman to get justice and closure. I, I, I'm still an advocate. I will say I, I noticed with your tone, though, that your tone about uh, Teresa has changed. Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, like you said, when she was, you know, high, high live and mm -hmm. all this other stuff, you yeah. were kind of like, what's wrong with this woman? Yeah. But since you, you've seen her sort of do a yes. 360 in that, okay, And clean now, up the Facebook yeah, pages and I become you're, into you're her. you speaking more favorably of right. her. No, I, and I didn't mean to, uh, if I, you know, came out that way. It, it, the fact of the matter is something wasn't right. I know she's grieving, mm -hmm. but at the same time, if you want answers how you were going about it, these white, I've been with the man for a long time. <laughs> and, you know, and I know how they operate. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get any justice knocking on doors and being on the outside looking in. I'm not saying sell out whatever. There's a process to everything. That Use that strategic. process. Right. You live right there in Chicago. Where are the Chicago congressmen? The Illinois congressmen? They don't give a shit about but, that. But, but, but you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. but, but, but by using that process versus... Local yeah. Ray Ray on the side that's the advocate, that's not going to get you anywhere. Uh, they, they, they honestly don't care. And it's easy not to care about somebody who is, you know, like I said, I'm not saying anything mm -hmm. bad about Teresa. I mean, some people might look at me and say I'm ratchet. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's hard for uh, these so-called dignitaries mm -hmm. to to maybe have compassion for her because they look down on her. But You know, she's got the, right. the red hair. The no, no, hair, no, no, so, and I understand that. I'm not this, saying it's right, but that's right. just what but, I'm But this at. is a national... It, this could have been a national news story from if the very beginning. If she was white, though. Right. No, no, no. Yes. But what I'm saying, though, yes. if she had followed the proper protocol, the procedures of doing this, she could have been on those radio stations a long time ago. There's a lot of black radios that picked this up. Yeah, she was just doing it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, noise and fire. Yeah, because if you think about it, yeah. this story would have been dead if internet viewers that are watching this show right now hadn't kept it right the, so you know, the, yeah and a lot of people we talked about this before talk bad about the facebook detectives yeah saying they don't know what's going on but it's kudos to those people that like stayed yourself, with it that stayed yeah, with who, it who stayed on top of it, keeping the story before the people right because eventually uh when all the stuff is being exposed somebody's gonna have to answer to this and say wait a minute hold on right uh the biggest question that i would have for mrs martin would be did you get a second autopsy i, I believe she did and they're waiting for the results of that. Oh, well, that's autopsy. good if she did, yeah. Yeah, you know, because for her not to do it before they put that girl on the ground would have been a travesty yeah. in her case. Thank God they did if she yeah. did, yeah. So, um, but like I said, um, do I believe that this girl was gang affiliated? Yes, I do. Do I believe that, uh, you know, she ran with people that are of questionable means? Yes, I do. You're, you're smoking, you're 19 years old, you're underage drink. It's obvious that this girl was in rebellion. Like a lot of young people do, we've done it. Right. Um, she made a bad decision, and and it's cost her her life. And maybe even her friends betrayed her. And you know they know more than they do. I I, I do believe that because these videos are coming out. So uh, I just thought it was ironic that she's on his show on Halloween night. Or you think there was a significance with, the, with Halloween and her being on the show? I just think to bring the macabre of what happened to this girl, you know, that macabre thing. Like, okay, it's Halloween, everybody. This girl was snatched up and we don't know what happened to her. Yeah, I mean, it can, <laughs> but I mean, if that's true, then, you know, I think we should be a little bit more aware in that we're being used for that Ratings purpose. Ratings and... Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but... I guess if you know, Dr. Oz is pretty big time, so yeah. you can get on the show, get and on I, the and show. I, and I believe she was on there for 15 or 20 minutes and her, with her lawyer, thank mm -hmm. God. Bring your lawyer with you because, again, she's not one of those that speaks. Yeah, that's what she should have been doing in yeah, the first place, that, is having all those. Yeah, yeah, that speaks very well and mm -hmm. do that. So uh, we're going to keep you guys updated on that. Again, props to those guys that are keeping it up. Um, this is my opinion. She has her opinion. You have your opinion. All opinions are valid until we know the facts. Yeah, or all opinions are opinions until the facts come forward. Just, exactly. Yeah, just exactly. Opinions until are, we know the facts. And, exactly. and the great thing about opinions is that everybody's Everybody entitled to one. Right. Just like an asshole.
I don't know if everybody has one. No, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, so we want to uh, keep that going. Uh, a lot of guys uh, out there, straight drop, whatever. But uh, I'll, let me give you guys a, just a real look at a clip of Miss Jenkins in the radio interview and Dr. Oz. Let's take a look at this. So uh, good luck to Mrs. Uh, Martin, and like I said, she's she's supposedly uh, cancer free. I mean, this woman went through a oh, lot good, in good. a short period of time. Good. So I mean, to go through that, to recover from that, that would have killed probably the most average person. Well, you know, and they say that there's always something good out of something bad. Now, I would I would hate to have to experience what she experienced as far as losing a child, but I mean, sometimes it takes certain things like that. To make you to to ha make you have a paradigm shift mm -hmm. and make you maybe reflect and say, okay, this is how I used to live life. Yes. Is there something I should be doing differently on this portion of my life? I got a second chance. I'm cancer free. Have I always done things or you know the way I was supposed to? Questionable. I mean, mm -hmm. who, who knows? Right. Right. So now that I'm cancer free, unfortunately, I'm without my child. I can. I'm not gonna let my struggle and what I've been through being go in vain. You know, maybe I am not going to change my life around and be a little bit more reputable, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. And, you know, bring awareness to whatever has happened to her. And that's exactly what she said. Yeah. She can help uh, another family avoid a there loss like this. She said that's what she that's why another reason why she's out there uh, promoting. Know who your friends are. Absolutely. Know what's, you know, know your I love surroundings. It. I, I, so I love she's that. She's taking a negative and trying to use I it as a positive. I love it because... You know, um, like I said, unfortunately, she had to lose her child. But I think mm -hmm. um, all of us as parents, we've all, we know nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things I think you should be doing. And that is continuously being in your child's life. Mm -hmm. Advising and teaching. Right. Your, and not being afraid to snatch them into right. a knot if you need to. Yeah, teaching is know? a lifetime commitment. And that's what Absolutely. you're supposed to be doing. Um, uh, and here, here's a teachable moment for those that are listening. Now, this woman lost her child. She was from Chicago. This is just my opinion. You have money for weave. You have money to get this girl's nails done. You have money for tattoos. You have money for piercings. You have money for beer. You have money to go buy uh, tapes or whatever else you're doing. But you didn't have insurance on your child to bury her. Well, yeah, we, we speak about insurance a lot on this show. Um, and even some on my show. Yeah, we got to. It's it's just something that in the black community we know we need. But it's like, eh. I mean, I, I, I used to sell life insurance. I don't mm -hmm. sell it anymore. But I used to sell it, and I, I could say all the time, you'd be surprised the excuses I would hear. Oh, well, shoot, I, mm -hmm. nah, I could be doing something with that. Oh, that's a bill. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, in some communities, I don't want to leave her rich. I don't want her to have no other man up in here while mm -hmm. I'm gone. Mm -hmm. And all this other stuff. Well, I just simply can't afford it. But as you say, you know, and I was sitting in some of these people's houses, I'm like, okay. You get the flat screens. You got all these flat screens. You got cable. So mm -hmm. that's, you know. A bill, the kids are nicely, sharply dressed. Not saying they shouldn't be. Got but the Jordans, you, the latest Yeah, Jordans. but if you can afford that kind of stuff, surely you can afford a couple of bucks for life insurance. But mm -hmm. we never, life insurance is something you don't know you need until you need it. Until you need it. And I'm going to tell you guys this, for, and I don't understand why people are still banking at banks that crash the economy. A lot of you lost your homes because of banks, and you still put your money there. You need to get become members of a credit union. So because you, you're a member. Yeah, because you're a member. Mm -hmm. And they will give you uh, $2,000 or $3,000 in life insurance just because you're a member. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, something is better than nothing. nothing. You're not going to be able to bust a grape with $2,000, no, no, but, but, but it's something. But, but you add another dollar to it. If right. you want to increase it, a yeah. dollar a month, that's $10,000. Right. It's something. Yeah, I mean, it's, so to your point, there's never an excuse not to not have, to have it. it. My father always says, you know, uh, we beg for what we want and buy. Yeah. No, we, we, we buy what, what we, we want, want and, and beg, beg for what, what we need. need. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it is when it comes to life insurance, when you don't have it. And then somebody, God forbid, dies. dies. Car like, wash. Okay, get those buckets. Mm -hmm. You know how to fry some chicken, so we're going to sell some go plates. Find me. And go find me. And um, I did a, uh, a presentation that says, how many car washes does it take to yeah. have a, um, to a funeral? Right. The answer is you don't know. You, you can don't be know. out there indefinitely with some soap and buckets mm -hmm. trying to bury a child. Now, when I would see people asking for donations through mm -hmm. a life insurance, you know, for life insurance, if I had the money on me, I would give sure. it whatever I had. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, how many life insurance agents mm -hmm. tried to sit down with you or mm -hmm. you sat down with and you thumbed your nose at them? That's mm -hmm. a bill. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, that little vice, uh, like I said, uh, the credit union gives me 3000 and I'm a member of two credit unions. 
I, I get life insurance from, from both of them. Because Well, you know, I get money from both of them, whatever the deal is. And I put, you know, I just said, well, 3000 for free, that's great. Let me just give a dollar a month. I'm not even going to miss that. Right. And it's 10000 Right. So if you combine both credit unions, that's $20,000 if I died today. That's not including the insurance I have Right, already. outside of that, right. See, and it's just a dollar. Well, I mean, even for people who are, you know, maybe financially challenged, hell, you can get a term life insurance for next to nothing. nothing. Uh, you can you know, up it when you do better or, you know, change right. the, the, the type of a policy. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, like you said, there's the policies out there for next to nothing, nothing, but at least you will be protected in a time of death. And as a parent, if I have a child that's, you know, especially a minor child, but even if they're in the age of 18 to 25, I'm going to keep insurance on them because... We know things happen. and Yeah, well, my daughter will be 25. I've had her insured since she was a child. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to keep her insured until as long as I can, I can. do that. Right. Because, you know, yeah, she may get married in the future or whatever the case is. But, you know, I, let's, let's just say I did have a job to where I punched the clock and my daughter, God forbid, she passed away. A lot of times people don't realize is when you have a job, you get five days bereavement, three are paid and two are mm -hmm. not. And so how many times... I mean, does it does it take you longer than five days to grieve? Some people it does. Yeah, most people it does. Mm -hmm. And so here you are, oh my gosh, with such and such just died. And then, and then you have the financial thing to add into that. Yeah. On top of that, so how am I going to pay for this? My my husband just died, but my job is giving me five days mm -hmm. off. Three of those are paid. Two are not. Um, and yeah, I got to plan a funeral, mm -hmm. and then somewhere in between there, I got to grieve. So I'm gonna tell you like this. If something were to ever happen to somebody I love dearly, mm -hmm. I'm going to need some time off. Mm -hmm. Especially if it happened to my child or my man, I need yeah. to go to the nearest state hospital right. and be able to rock check in, in there. Yeah, but in. know that my bills are taken care right. of. Right. And a lot of people can't do that. Right. So you know, and, and I know people say, "Oh, they're trying to sell you something." We're not trying. And to... listen, we don't have a yeah. license to do yeah, that. Yeah, we don't have a license to do that. We're, we're trying to sell you. You're right. Advice and give you something so you don't be in a situation like this. This woman's child uh, dies. And then she's begging for help to bury the girl. And to your point, not to be judgmental, a lot of people will say that, well, damn, on every Facebook picture I see on Instagram, y'all got all the hair, and I know those bundles weren't cheap, mm -hmm. and you got the Jordans and the nails yeah. and the lifestyle, y'all popping bottles mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. And, and, and it's not to be judgmental. No. It's more or less like, listen, if you ask me for my money, I think I have a right to ask why you need my right. money. Or what, why are you so irresponsible with your money? Mm -hmm. And as an ex-life insurance agent, I would often wonder that. I can't tell y'all how many times I had people call and say, oh, my mama just died. I just, I, you know, we found this policy. You want to make sure it's still good. I look, I'm sorry, your mom let, let the policy right, lapse. lapse. You know, a year ago, ah, oh, you guys are crooks and your things. No, it's no, like you, know, a, you knew your mama was sick or whatever. How yeah. come you didn't check to see well, she was and, good? And the thing is, you know what? I mean, I only give a dollar to those credit unions because I bank at another, you know, I, yeah. another credit union. Right where my main money comes in. But um, technology, it's a lot of, I don't even miss it. It automatically goes, so my policy will never lapse because it automatically is going there. That's how I do it. Mine's automatically set up, so I won't have to be like, Ugh. yeah, every month, let me write this out. No, just, uh, you know, automate it. But, you know, we're, we're giving you guys advice. So, you know, there's nothing worse to be caught in a situation like that. Now, what if this lady was so desperate? to bury her daughter, that they made her sign a waiver to where she will never know the truth of what happened to her daughter. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Right, you know, so, um, so you know, I'm going to keep harping that until uh, people start, stop relying on GoFundMes and car washes to get their uh, loved one buried. And what a lot of people, since, you know, you brought up the issue of life insurance, we got a little time to mm -hmm. kill. A lot of pe times, uh, people don't realize the younger you are, the more healthier you are, the less it's going to cost you for a life insurance yes. policy because life insurance companies make money if you live, Long, not if right, you die. Right, There's right. no money in for them. So the longer you're going to live, the longer you're going to pay for that policy. Right. So get the policy while you're healthy, you're young, right. you know, you, you can pay a couple bucks for, yeah. the, for, you know, for life if you want to, the same yeah. amount. You know, that Starbucks you get once a week, you know, just, you know, just once a week, just $5, whatever it is. Uh, and that's a good example because, like, right now, I'm 47 years old. Do you know for me to get new life insurance or something like that, they want me to go through all this battery of testing? Because you're older. Right. And you when I was younger, I didn't have to go through all that. Yeah, I mean, depending on yeah. how much you got. got. Mm -hmm. But as you're older, hell yeah, you're, you're a man, first of all. So men die uh, sooner than women. Mm -hmm. You guys typically have more health problems. So, yeah, we need to um, 
uh, part of morbidity uh, rate or table, yeah, table we need to make sure that you're going to live. Yeah. So yeah, let's get some blood, let's mm -hmm. get some urine, mm -hmm. let's look into all your medical records yeah. and see what you've been through, right. and then we'll ensure you and we'll decide how much. It's probably going to cost you a lot mm -hmm. if you've been through a lot. Mm -hmm. And then for all of you guys that are listening to the show around the country, around the world that work for Walmart, are you aware that Walmart is smart enough to make money off of you by putting life insurance on their employees? Yeah, and um, I forget what they call it, but um, it's almost, well, some companies call it like a key person. Mm -hmm. So, um, or, or you yeah, get sure. insurance on your partner. If they die, okay, then the business can continue without mm -hmm. you. They, you know, break off your loved ones or yeah. whatever. Right. Or if actually the money is for them. Yeah. Hopefully it, your wife has insurance on you. Right, exactly. And so you got corporations that are taking out policies on their employees and their employees' loved ones. And if that person dies... Oh, well, that's $50,000 in Walmart. And especially staff. something like Walmart, they know you got a, a high stress um, uh -huh. level because Walmart ain't paying you, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you probably got to go bust two or three more gigs after right, that. Right, you, you, know. live, you live in a, a social, economic, and depressed area. Yeah, you're area. stressed. Mm -hmm. Stress so, is the number one killer. You know, so, so they're betting odds to make money off of you. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you work for them or not, they're going to make money off you. And a lot of Walmarts are doing that. Uh, it really is about educating yourself. Um, I have just a real quick life insurance story. Yeah, go ahead. Um, there is a gentleman um, at the life insurance office that I work for. And actually, an agent sold his family life insurance on him. He was 25. Um, the policy cost him about $25 or so. Um, wrote the insurance policy on, I think it was for like $50,000. He was approved for the, for the life insurance. His family got the $50,000. And they only made one payment. So, yeah, it's a I'm not saying to kill people, yeah. you know, it's a gamble, like but that, but... Life insurance does pay off. Now, God forbid they didn't have insurance on their child. Yeah. You know, he was 25, but somebody thought he was, you know, it was worthy a worthy cause to have him insured. Three mm -hmm. days later, he went and got well, killed. Um, I'm kind of glad we're talking about this on the show because here, here, here's what I want to do. Since you did sell life insurance and you, know, you have a, a wealth of knowledge about this. If I lived in a place like Chicago or Fifth Ward or the Ninth Ward, you know, these bad, somewhere in New York, the mm -hmm. bad places, Compton, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, the likelihood of my child or somebody being killed in that area is really great. How did a lot of white people keep their wealth or even accumulated wealth? Well, a lot of white people accumulated wealth through slavery. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I'm just saying. No, I know. Yeah. Um, life insurance is a vehicle to pass on wealth or mm -hmm. a legacy. So a lot of times people will get just the bare minimum. Well, how much is a funeral? I don't know, roughly ten to 12000 or more, depending on how big you want to go. Okay, that's all I want. Okay, but do you know for a couple, and I'm role playing mm -hmm. here, but do you know for a couple dollars more or so, you can actually bury a loved one plus leave a little bit of, you know, something or a legacy for your loved ones. And that's mm -hmm. what a lot of people do. Right. They look at life insurance as a legacy. legacy. You know what, if I pass on, I want to leave you guys something. Maybe you want to start mm -hmm. a business. Maybe you just want to have some money and go travel. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to leave you a legacy and opposed to leaving you dead. Right, leaving you dead. Um, mm -hmm. Why is it, do you think that in our community, we do not, we, you know, you and I both know we are the, our community alone is the 10th biggest consumers in the world. Mm -hmm. This economy is based on us. Well, buying. I want to say that we're the number one consumers in the world. That's the United States, not, not the world. Uh, because China has a billion. Okay, well, we're pretty close. Yeah. We, yeah. we are consumers and not yeah. producers. And, uh, well, we are trendsetters as well. So a lot of the mm -hmm. items are geared to what we like. A lot, yeah, a lot of people steal from us. Yeah. Go ahead. So, um, <laughs> but, why, but, but why is it that, you know, we don't, I mean, we can have all this wealth and it's like a couple of dollars. Mm -hmm. And we don't leave a legacy for our children and we don't, you know, we just, to hell with you, okay, you just go make it. Because you're, it's, a, it's a few things to it, but you're talking about a people who have been conditioned and used to struggling. Just, you know, not always, you know, as we always talk about after slavery, during the Jim Crow era, black people were the most productive. We had our mm -hmm. own thing, but we were used to living on scraps, the bare minimum. You want to break it down to the food we eat even in Hot slavery, moths. yeah, in slavery that we were given. The scraps, we were mm -hmm. given the leftovers, which is why we, not me, or you, mm -hmm. you know, we eat the chitlins, the mm -hmm. hog bogs, and mm -hmm. the hog head cheese, and just Greens, you're supposed to be plain greens, not eating them. Yeah, the, we, mm -hmm. we eat that kind of stuff. So we are, we're, we're kind of used to that, um, to kind of getting by on very little. Right. And a lot of it has to do with not really knowing our worth. See, that's what I'm saying, but we, we keep getting by. When are we going to get over 
We're going to get over, and I'm talking to y'all good people, black people are going to get over when we stop giving away 97% of our wealth to other people. Black people in, uh, overall see $1.3 trillion a year mm -hmm. in the United States alone. We have $1.3 trillion of buying power, but we give 97% of that away right. to everybody else. Uh, I often post, post videos of, um, now you're starting to see the, the rise of sleeping giant of black people mm -hmm. are now boycotting the Koreans and anybody else who has um, been wronging black people who will come Not set really. up shop. Not really. A lot of those sisters are still getting their weeds. Yes, so, yeah. but we, we're making progress mm -hmm. of these people who come set up shop on purpose right. in the black community suck out all the money not only suck out the money but Life. they treat us bad yeah, choke us out so yeah so now we're seeing these boycotts these active boycotts and they are actually successful in shutting these businesses down or actually just running them out go to your neighborhood with that nonsense mm -hmm. go to koreatown and do the shit you're doing to us see i don't know if they're able to do that there but we are being successful and so we are starting to wake up right. but when we stop giving our money away our power but we're, that's when we're going to start seeing progress. Right, right. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. And that's a good point. But uh, I want to address this this point mostly to women. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm a young... Watch out now. Yeah, no, I'm a young woman. I, you know, unfortunately, I got on welfare. I followed my friends or my mom or whatever, lived that mm -hmm. lifestyle. Now, even though I'm on welfare, I could still get my family out of welfare if I put insurance... Now, I'm not saying you hope your child dies, but just in case something happens. Well, I, I, the thing is, and I get where you're going with mm -hmm. that. Uh, the thing is, for welfare, it's supposed to be a temporary thing. It's supposed yeah. to help you get. But off we know it's a lifestyle feet. now. Well, it's become mm -hmm. a lifestyle, and a lot of that is because we don't know who we are, and a lot of it is through conditioning, and a lot of um, politics involved are geared toward keeping, keeping us certain there. people on welfare, yeah. making it to where okay, here, you know, you can get housing, get food stamps, you get mm -hmm. cash aid, any of that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, making it very and, easy. and we'll incarcerate your man for not paying. Right, and so yeah. There's a lot involved with that, but it's a, it's a to me it's a mental state. I mean, welfare well, is I don't see how anybody survives on yeah. welfare. Well, they don't, uh, and and you, and you can see that there's right. no way that But what I'm saying is, and like in in the Kanika Jenkins or uh, Miss Martin situation, this one mm -hmm. had six kids. I believe three, half of the kids, or at least two of them, are dead, mm -hmm. and she still lives in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes wonder, like, does she have insurance on I me? Mean, if you're going to have that many children. And just, okay, you have six kids. Let's say it's $60 a month mm -hmm. to cover all those kids. Isn't that a small price to pay? It is a small price to pay. However, it I mean, to me, it's not really as much about money as it is um, a conditioning of your state of mind. Because this is, a, this is the thing, too. A lot of times we always talk about moving away from the hood mm -hmm. instead of staying, staying and there. bettering where we're at. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, black people need to be together. I always say this. And I'm not the only one that says this, but integration is one of the worst things that happened to yeah, black absolutely, people. Absolutely. Once we were able to go and be free to roam about the country, we forgot who we were. They took our dollars. They said, that, right. that green is as good as this green. Right. We left our communities and our um, way of living. And we're still doing it. And those, we're still those, doing those it. Those upward Negroes are still separating themselves from the rest of us. Look, right. I'm over here. I'm in Bowling Green. I'm the, the special blacks. Yeah. You yeah. Know, until they get, they get pulled over and right. get spread eagles. Right. Like, oh my God. Right. You, you know. know who I am. Right. I'm in a gated community. I'm the first Negro out here right okay i don't know what that means to anybody yeah, so, but okay um, but what, I, what i'm saying is in her situation mm -hmm. if she had insurance and you know uh god you know she lost a, a child whatever mm -hmm. i mean maybe if she had the insurance on that first child kanika wouldn't have been in that environment to go somewhere else yeah but you know this it's, it's just not, yeah mm -hmm. but it's just something that's not we know because like i said as a life insurance agent i went to a lot of people's neighborhoods i wasn't mm -hmm. the type of in fact i work in our neighborhoods mostly mm -hmm. so i know most of those people had somebody talk to them about life insurance and listen life insurance agents has the reputation of a used car salesman and i say that to say i know life insurance agents are aggressive so i know that mm -hmm. i'm sure i can bet you a dollar to a donut at least 10 agents have talked to Kanika's mom about life insurance for whatever reason. She didn't see that it was important. She saw other things being important, which right. normally what we do in our community, we see other things mm -hmm. being important. Like as Christmas is coming up, most people go out and spend right. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on stuff that will perish. And, and will pay for it with their uh, tax refund. Opposed to saying, you know what? I don't. If I'm going to get you a Christmas gift, I'm going to get you to give a life insurance for a whole year. Mm -hmm. And the next year, I'm going to pay down the or, premium or, again for another year. Yeah, or remember back in the day, uh, Christmas, Christmas would come and you had that Uncle uh, Gus would send you that uh, savings bond? 
Right. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, 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 but people, a lot of times people don't even know what yeah. bonds are. I know, it's so sad. You know, you get, get, you get, if you're going to get a gift for somebody, get something they can use. But 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 they know Cardi B. They know right, yeah, Lil Wayne. Right, yeah, and all this know, other stuff. They, 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 they know all that stuff, but when it comes to the finances, and then when something happens, God forbid, and trust me, I'm not bashing anybody. That's why we're talking about this. Please, please, please put insurance. If you live in those type of environments, and even if your if you kids don't are live involved, in those environments, you right. just get life insurance. Right, but if you're in an environment where your child is constantly being har- harassed by the police or whatever, put some insurance on it. Yeah, you know, it just, I don't know, it's sad. We are just conditioned to not think that stuff is important. Or, you know, I've even heard people say, well, I'm going to be dead. Why I care about some life insurance? Shoot, that's on them. Yeah, but it's like, would you want somebody to leave that type of burden for right. you? And then it's on society, too, because think about it. While you're living off the welfare, who do you think's paying for that? Yeah, I mean, if somebody's going to have to cry and stress over getting you in the ground because you're like, I'm going to be dead. I don't care what they do with my mm-hmm. body. You know, that that's unfair. It, I mean, it's just, it's, it really is, especially if you have a ki- you have kids, as what Donovan's saying, you have children. It is irresponsible of you to not at least have life insurance on yourself. Mm-hmm. Because especially if you have younger kids, like when my daughter was younger, I had a lot of life insurance on myself because at the time she hadn't finished school. Mm-hmm. And if I was to die that day, I would have wanted her to be able to have her college education paid for. I would want her to live, a, you know, a decent life. I wouldn't have wanted her to have to go from here to there and, you know, my family to beg and, you know, to fight who's going to take care of her. I wanted them to be able to fight over, oh, well, damn, she left the nice yeah. life insurance. Well, I'll take care well, of her. <laughs> well, 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 the funny thing is, you know, I have, like, several different life insurance policies. And I've always had it since I was in the military, mm-hmm. since I was younger. Um, I'm fairly in okay health. Um Put it like this. I don't even let my family know how much insurance I have on myself. Yeah, because well, I don't want to yeah. have to be I don't like, want to be bumped over in an accident. Call me, where you been? And come <laughs> yeah. knock on the door and bail. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, or you know, I'm in this accident. You know. Right. And I'm not saying my family would do that. I'm just saying. Right. Whenever my mom asked me about it, I said, well, mom, uh, if something happens to me, the safe is over here. And but you know what? Why are you joking about that? I've sat down with people who say that, too. Why? Nah, if I get some life insurance, she might kill me. <laughs> Married yeah, to. Married to. But I'm serious. They would be right. that serious. Ah, they, oh, I get some life insurance. They might try to kill me. I'm like, you was a paranoid yeah. ass yeah. No, individual. I, no, like I said, I don't give the number. I just tell my mom, mom, there's a life insurance policy. It is in the safe or, you know, it's on this disc. It's in this file. I keep it in several different areas in case, you know, they can find it. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, so, yeah, you, and, and that's the thing, too. You and they're going to be people. very surprised. I'm like, this motherfucker, yeah. I'm just playing. No, they'll be like, damn. <laughs> Did he need a mommy there or something? Yeah. Say, no, nothing for you. Hey, one thing I, <laughs> it's I all will going say. To Bell and Misty. Yes, one thing I will say. I am giving a significant amount of money to my uh, to the ASPC A for and, the animals. For the animals. Like uh, Paris Hilton and them granddaddy did, but then they end up fighting and yeah, getting fighting that money back. Dad, that right. dude was like, I ain't leaving y'all motherfuckers right, nothing. Right, I'm right. giving it all to charity. Yes, no, a lot of people <laughs> do that. I mean, because you know, you want your kids to be strong by themselves. I mean, I'm a self made man. You know, yeah, but God damn it, I'm not going to leave my daughter a dollar no, time I make no, the best No, 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 and, and that's true. Yeah. If I had a daughter, I would think, I'd probably think like that. But I have sons, and I want you to be a man. I mean, and I that's, have a son. I'm, I and, and, be... and, and that is exactly why, D, if you really notice why I'm like so alpha, you know, male shy, yeah. is because I'm like, no, I did it. You know, boom, boom, you okay, can't Okay, but enough. come on. You know, you, you a croak. You're not going to leave. You ain't going to do no mommy beer or something. No, no, I'm not, not going to do you. The, no, no. I'm going to leave no, you no. the hard time no, no, I no, have. No, no, But I'm not going <laughs> to let, but I'm not going to let, let my children know oh, and yeah. think, oh, well, I, all I got to do is wait it out. Well, no, you, no. <laughs> see, you put that banana pill over there. Yeah, no, just wait it out. You know, he'll die. You know, no, I'm not going to let them know that. I let them yeah. know. I don't plan to leave you shit. Yeah. I don't plan to. Well, no, I know. Like, I know you ain't that man. Oh, my God. But, um. But yeah, and, I, and that's what I think we need to start doing to our young male men. Make them, how can you sit there and say, well, you know, I'm in the hood. I got to do what I got to do. Well, goddamn. It's the same thing in life. <laughs> right. If you just apply yeah, that, yeah. that effort to exactly. something, you know, like a business Positive. or something. Right. right. I mean, a legal right. business. Right. You know, I, I mean, you know, that's the way I see it. No, it's, you're absolutely right. If putting it, you know, in a situation, anybody's going to do what they need to do. Like my father said, God has not shortchanged you to where you can't do what everybody else is doing to be successful. Exactly. Guys, please do not forget DK, 3 p.m. Facebook Live. She's talking about a lot of good stuff. If you want to, if you want to get awakened, tune into her show. And if you miss it, she's on YouTube. Just, just look for DK, 
Can't miss it. It's a great show. Uh, we're going to put some more stuff out. Daryl Terrell's, Daryl Terrell's Two Cents, a new podcast, and Daryl Terrell Times on Facebook, as well as the Donovan Sadiq Show. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff as well. You guys, uh, take care. Be safe. It is November. Thanksgiving's coming up. Get those sweet, sweet potato pies ready. <laughs> Make mine vegan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week. Deuces.